Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the sixth season of the Simply Colorful Fibercast. My name is Lynn Marquardt. I'm joining you here on January 4th, 2019 from the Simply Colorful studio. And let's see what we can sew together in the next hour. I have to tell you, we're doing a experiment. I said I was going to do it. Right above here, we have the hand cam. And so we are hopefully not only broadcasting to you all, hi, but also through Facebook Live, you can see what I'm working on up close. So give me one second just to make sure that it's working. And then we will certainly say hi to everyone. And I cannot wait to get caught up. I've missed everyone. We're going to be working on charm quilts today. Um, let's see. Where do we look? Let's go to, oh, here we go. I see us. Okay, it's working. Huh, crack me up. I think it's working. Anyway, hello. Hello, everyone. Actually, let's do this at first so that you can see me on both screens. Maybe? Oh, how did that work? I didn't want that. <laughs> I should have left it alone. You guys knew I couldn't leave it alone. Right? Okay, here we go. Welcome to everyone who has joined. I love that you're here. What we're going to do today is we've been playing with some charm packs. And specifically, these, the uh, Riley Blake, these are Vintage Daydream. And Karen, my sister, KB, also known as KB and I, were playing with how we could make a quilt out of a charm pack and what were the different varieties we could do. And so we have been coming up with various patterns. The one behind me is a very simple uh, patch work of these charms plus white charms. And then it's rounded with some Kona yellow and some white. Um, let me see. I thought I would show you a picture of that one. And then I'll show you some others too. So here's this. That's the first quilt that we made with these charms. And very simply, it's a, it's a baby quilt. And I have this right here. Um, let's see. This, in order to make this one, was one yard of white, one and a quarter yard of yellow, half a yard of punch for the binding, and the rest were the 40 charms in my pack. So once we make these, you can use any charm and then go get some Kona and get your alternating colors. So next, tonight, we're gonna work on a second one that I'm calling Red and Espresso Houses. And it's that. And in this, the white are the charms. So we're going to use this plus this red and this espresso. And then we might play with using some yellow, I'm thinking, for the, for the windows here. We'll see if that works. So why don't I, and then we have some other work. So we're going to do that. We're going to talk about the Missouri Star Quilt Company and the upcoming retreat. I, I can't wait to see Becca and Katie and, and everyone else who's coming. We do have a, a bed. If anyone would like to join us, we have a ticket that we'd be happy to sell to you rather than selling it back to Missouri Star. Or maybe we sell it back to Missouri Star and you buy it. Um, it turns out my niece got a job 
and so she won't be able another job she switched jobs so she won't be able to come down um let's see what was i going to do let me just make sure that that you all are there and i'm at I'm going to turn off the volume okay, here. You all are. Okay. Hey, Sue Norton sees me. Norma, Lacey. Oh, I'm watching here and on YouTube at the same time. That's awesome, Lacey. Tell me how it works. I love tips for what's working, what's not. Oh, and so is Mary Ellen. Oh, and hi, Becca, and hi, Carolyn. And who are the three other people? Can you see this? <laughs> Bless you for putting up with this. Oh, but I think this is going to work. This has legs. So this one, I'm going back to my trusty paper piecing. And I made this in EQ and I thought, oh, don't do paper piecing. Just do your cutting. And then I saw that it came out with four 15 sixteenths. My sister KB says we can round that up to five. So I'm taking your word for that, but four and nine sixteenths. And then we had to cut a 37 inch angle. And I thought, nope, I'm going to go back to my paper piecing, my tried and true paper piecing. Of course, wonder where those went. Here they are. And I even went so far as to label them. So what's red is going to be white. What's a little bit shaded here is going to be espresso brown. And then, like I say, this window here, I may on the second one make that yellow, but for now it will be red. And then, of course, the charm square will be the main part of the house. So let us get started. I'm going to take charm squares and put them over there and turn on my machine. Grab your project. This is, as everyone knows, or I hope you know, and if you're new, Fibercast is, is not training because clearly I, I wing it as I go. But it's just an opportunity for all of us to get together on Fridays and sew for a while. It's such a nice group of people. I think that you will, I know I've made friends. I, I hope that you make friends amongst yourselves and we just have a good time. Forget everything else and just find our flow. So I'm gonna put my sewing stitch down to 1.8 and remember this paper piecing. Don't look at this, I'm cutting paper with scissors. If anyone else did that, I wouldn't be happy, right? Oh, and as you know, I like my glue stick. So if we take our glue stick and how are we going to do that? And figure out where to put it. That should help us a little. Okay, then we have red, although if you can see, I need to follow this. So A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, and then A7. So I'm gonna take that off. Forget we did that so far. And let's start with our espresso. These, I love this Kona. And the espresso is just so rich and coffee-like, right? Okay, so there's that. And then we'll do some red. Oh, I can't tell you how much I have been looking forward to this. I missed everyone. I just, I just missed it. So for, for those of you 
who might be new. We started this adventure five, oh boy, I told myself I was going to remember this. What was it? January 1st, 2014. And we've done it pretty much every week, right? And then in the middle of this past December, for the first time, we took three weeks off. We traveled. Okay, B and I have stories to tell about St. Martin. Then we had Christmas, of course. And you will notice here that I am no Carol Doak. So I don't even use that, although I should. Um, I should use her ruler. It's very good. It gives you a good quarter inch or eighth of an inch seam. So actually, let me move this over so that I'm hoping you can even see me ironing my Panasonic iron. Let's see if this works. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, it's jiggling. <laughs> okay. So there's the red. Now let's do an espresso three. As a counterbalance to my phone. So my phone is up there. I have a half a bottle of a liter of Coca-Cola as my counterbalance. Now, what's going on? Well, that was unusual. off and went back to a 2.4. That's not good. See how big that stitch line is? That should be much smaller so that we can tear it off quickly or easily, the paper. While I'm here, I'll cut this. So let's go do that again. Put us down to 1.9. That's better. Okay. So Sue, I'm so glad you're out there. Is it really true what you wrote that you have 70 Dear Jane blocks left? That is just great. That is amazing. You are definitely winning this challenge. I'll cut that a little bit too big. Oh, ah, I was gonna do the wrong one. This'll take some getting used to, won't it? But we can do it. really had fun doing the one that's behind us, the quilt behind us, because it was literally just charm squares. And I was very much into sewing them just perfectly straight. And I ironed them. You would have been proud of me. I ironed them all the right way. So they nested. And then put my binding on. Carol. Hi, Carol Ouellette, if you're out there. Carol helped me with... Oh, that's right. I can't see my texts. Huh. Carol helped me with the design of this one behind me. And she looked at, which is so useful to have other people look at the same thing. So she was thinking about the binding, I mean the border, and making sure that when we put the border on, that we had the seams 
in the right in the same symmetrical places on all four sides of the quilt. And so we designed the size of the border so that it was easily cut out of a 42 inch yardage of cotton and it worked great. And so Carol, when you see it, you're gonna see my seams line up beautifully. And I sewed it together in a day. This quilt is going to have three inch bind uh, sashing all the way around it. It's gonna have red. So this quilt as designed, as you recall seeing, it's going to be very red, but I wanted it that way. See, now you guys get to see how messy I am. Look at all of these. <laughs> oh, so glad to. Last year was fine, but it's always nice to have a fresh beginning. I feel like we learned things. Hopefully you can see this. Let me just go see. Oh, no, not quite. Let's see if that's a little bit better. Ouch. There we go. Okay. Anyway, what was I saying? This is such a grand experiment. Cracks me up. Okay, so there we have that. Now we go to do another red line. If you like how this goes, having the, the hand cam, if you will, the fiber hand cam, please do me a favor and let me know. If you don't like it, let me know too, but go gentle. <laughs> um, and if you like it and you have other friends you think might like it, please share. We'd love that. I really, the more the merrier, because we all get busy and we all do other things that over time our community morphs and changes and that's all good. We get fresh thinking. Which is why you have, if, if you're still here, you have to stick around because I have a package that my sister sent from Pennsylvania that I have not opened. I have a package here and we're going to open it in a few minutes after I do this block. We'll see what she sent together, we will see. Okay, now we get to do this one. Now this one, hmm. Because I don't have much extra, I have to be very careful on this one. Hmm. See if that does the trick. I know some of you went skiing, others went on cruises. <laughs> oh, so we should tell you about St. Martin. First off, they're doing a, an amazing job recovering from the hurricane. And yet there's still a lot more to be done that we saw. Um, but the weather, we went the week before Christmas. So what was that, the 15th to the 20, 20th? Oh, that did not work very well. Hmm. See what happened? 
when I turn this over, it goes askew that way and it needs to come up this way. So what am I going to do here? I could just stretch it. Okay, here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to take a little bit of the seam in there. It's not ideal, but it'll straighten it out a little bit and there's enough play. If I don't forget which, which way to go. a little straighter. Okay. Oh, am I seeing people online? This is cool. Who's out there? Hi, Terry Lynn. Hi. My birthday girl. KB, Lacey says, oh, KB's out there. <laughs> Hi everyone, KB says, took me a minute to figure out what's going on, but now I get it. Just did, wow, I'm tempted on the Lucy Boston. It's very pretty. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are talking. Hi, Cherish. Ah, uh, that's what I wanted. I wanted you guys to be able to talk together and me see it. Maybe you've been doing it all along and I haven't been seeing it. I don't know, but I'm thrilled. Okay, and now that KB's there, here, we can open up her, her package. So this is going to be the start of the log cabin. We have three pieces here. So this, when it turns over, that'll be that. I hope I've done this right. Well, we will see, won't we? <laughs> hey, boy. There. All right, you know what? Humor me. We're going to keep going on this to make sure we can do it, make sure it works. Again, now you guys get to see how truly, truly scrappy my quilting is. And boy, was it different from what I've been working on. I worked on another custom quilting project. So I've done three custom quilts since the beginning of, I think, December. And I'm proud of each one of them. I can show you pictures. The latest one was the Simply Colorful one for Jean that was she completed in 2014. Okay, so there's one. Here's another red. I really should figure out how to do this with by just cutting my fabric. I think I will do that so that by next week we can do this more rapid fire and I will do more of these. It's not like they're curves. Woohoo. Okay, there's a second one. Okay, here. Let's use this red for this one. 
And now I made a little slightly bigger espresso. Boom. Okay, so this is this, this, put those two over there. I don't even know where that will go. I guess that'll go there. Did I goof it up, you guys? <sighs> no, 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 no. No, we're good. Okay. So put this one over here. Yeah, I'm cutting these and I'm going to do this the pieced way because this is just too wasteful for me. But the whole point of this whole thing is to show how different one set of charm squares looks in a different quilt. And that's what we're going to be playing with for the next couple of weeks because I'm intrigued by it. And I like the idea that just with that set of charms, five by five inch charm pack, you can make so many different varieties. See, like this is so wasteful, this fabric. Okay, so finger press this open and then figure out how to do this such that it lies the way we want it. it should work. Go. Were you surprised when you saw the overhead cam? I hope so, because that was my goal. Okay, so now let's get all this stuff out of your way. Oh, let's do this one, sorry. Maybe, no, that won't even fit, okay? Have no fear. Okay. Well, those are the chimneys, duh. There's that. I can iron that. I wonder if Sandra is out there. over right and give this a good iron my red's a little bit wrinkly okay and then this up there You see, I figured that this would be so much red, this quilt, that I sprung for some Aurifil red thread. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever had Aurifil red thread. What if my mother's out there? Mom, are you out there? It's 
been so mild here on the East Coast, but I think that's going to end next week. Tomorrow it's going to rain. But then I think I heard it, them say it would be going to get colder next week. It's time. Although I'm sorry to hear about the various accidents, pileups. So now what I'm doing is we have our pieces, now I'm cutting them out so that we can sew them together or at least place them together. And again, then we get to see what Karen sent. So she also took a charm pack, I suspect. Actually, I know. And that's what's in the FedEx bag. Because my sister is awesome. And she made this all for everyone. And she got it to me in time for tonight. She's amazing. Okay, so there's one piece. They have, oh, did I goof this up? No, red. <laughs> How many times am I going to say, did I goof this up? Yes, I did goof it up. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, we're getting there. Now, once I do this in real life, I will use my rotary cutter to cut these out. And I'll get myself into a, a rhythm because most charm packs have 40 or 42. And so these quilts, like this one with three inch sashing all around, it's going to be pretty big, which is by design. That's how I wanted it. Okay, so here is what that is going to look like. Oh, it's a Y seam, brother. But we can do it. Why don't we sew it all together? Well, no, no, I want to take your your phone messages. You can see that. You should be able to. And there we go. So as you can imagine, once we change the different charms, it'll take on a different look. I'm just putting them down. And when I sew it, I'll show it to you. So there's, these are some neat ones. I did look online. And of course, I think these charm packs, and my sister taught me this because she knows of it from the floral industry and and uh, ribbon buying and fabric buying and supply buying and the, the fashion trends. She said, and she, I'm discovering, the charm packs come and go and it's hard to find them when they're gone. So for example, this daydream pattern from Riley Blake, I could only find some yardage of a few fabrics on the fat quarter shop. Everyone else was sold out. So it just means when we make these patterns, these charm square patterns, as long as we have our measurements, we can go into the local shop and see what's the latest charm pack, right? So what a cool way to make a modern or a, a in-style quilt at relatively low cost. Because that's what, I don't know about you, but I always, I have bags of scraps that are aging just like I am. And I, I worry about creating things that look old and not with it and not modern. And this way, we can go in and buy our charm for $10 or $12, whatever it is, get some Kona cotton or some grunge or some dots or some country classic from Joann's, whatever we have on hand that's solid that goes with it. 
and voila, we have a quilt that looks like it was made today and not 10 years ago. So that was the thinking behind this. Plus, it's just fun to play with these new fabrics. Okay, so let's see who's out there. As always, I should have said this minutes, many minutes ago. If you would like to comment on Facebook Live, please do so. Otherwise, go to, send me an email to lynn at simplycolorful.com, and I'll always show it there. Um, let me start at the bottom. Oh, it's so nice to see you, Kathy. Kathy says she's happy to find us live. I'm glad that you're here live. That's wonderful. And Carol, she says, I'm working on a mystery. Good. Oh, and there's a Bonnie reveal. That one is gorgeous. Oh, good. Okay. Cherish says, I'm looking to make a baby quilt for my first grandbaby. Oh, first off, congratulations on your baby. This, this baby quilt behind me might be great. I'll put this in Patreon. This I'll put all of these patterns that we work on. We'll go right in Patreon. Um, this might be a good one. So like I say, you buy one yard of white Kona, one and a quarter yard of yellow Kona, and you buy a a pack of charms that go with white or yellow or white or blue or whatever two colors of, of that you'd like. Oh, Carol's out there. Joyce is out there. Hi, Joyce. Sewing Kathy. I'm so glad you're out there. I hope you're well. Jill. Jill, my one of my many knitting goddesses. So glad you're out there. Happy Friday. Okay, so now it's time for the package. Clunk. So this is what came in the mail. Let me move this over. Let me put this. We are going to finish this tonight. So let me just put this aside. That's how we'll wrap up. I was going to talk about color. I got a color book written in 1901. I kid you not. It's called Color Problems. It was written by Vanderpool back in 1901, and it's very in-depth. And so I thought, in fact, why don't I? If we have time, we'll talk a little bit about it, and we'll talk about it over the coming weeks and months. It really gets into heavy-duty scientific color theory and the light and the, the way that particles in wavelengths hit us and we see it through the light and how it's different in sunlight versus artificial light. And there's so much more here that I do not understand. But I thought like every week we can at least dive into one thing. So we'll do that before we leave tonight. And I love having it. And it references other color theory. But we have something to open here. What could this be? I'm sort of reluctant to cut it because it's fabric that I know. <laughs> oh, we had such fun. KB and her husband and Bob and I went on a catamaran sail. Here, I can cut this. Off the coast of St. Martin, and we went to a little island called Prickly Pear. Those of you who have been to St. Martin, I'm sure recognize that. And then over to Anguilla. Oh, this is a finished quilt top, folks. What do we have here? Oh, how exciting! She sent us some charm packs. Okay, B, thank you. Hello, darling charm packs. Oh, look at those. Well, you didn't have to do that, but I love them. Oh, man, those are going to be fun. Imagine we're going to make four different quilts with these. 
And what we might do is we might look for some testers, if you will. Thank you, Moda, hello, darling. Awesome. Now, what do we have here? Here it is. Can you see that or that? You can't really see it, so let's look at the real thing. This is like snowballs. Oh, sweet. Oh, you made it in different oh, varieties. Look at this. So this is a sample. KB, this is beautiful. So this would be her other charms, and all she did was combine black and white, and she even did the yardage. So all you need is your charm pack plus a yard of the white and a yard and a quarter of the black. Oh, KB, I love that. Here, oh, oh, how luscious. I know this, this punch fabric looks so familiar from our, our ABC quilt. Ah, oh, KB, I love that. So these are your charms. And then again, all we need are the, for the white, we need one yard. For the Kona punch, we need one and a quarter. And then for backing, we need two and seven eighths. And it ends up being 59 by 41. So a big baby quilt. Cherish, this might be perfect too. So this is another one. Wow, KB, that's beautiful. Thank you. Huh. Wow. So we are making charm quilts. Let's go back to this house one. KB, I love that. Now, how would you guys do this? I'm just going to do this one first. This is something Carol Doak taught me when I was at a class with Jen Sorensen. Jen Sorensen introduced me to Carol Doak years ago up in New Hampshire, back when Carol was still traveling and teaching. And what you do is you put your pin through straight down, what she did, where you want your match to be. And I'm gonna do it on here too. And you have to put it straight down, right? Okay, so there it is straight down. Then you get another pin. And without moving the up and down of your fabric, you pin it. And then you hope it sort of, I hope that it sort of matches up when all is said and done. See, like this one, if I were really particular, I would put a pin down here. Let's see how far off or on we are. So we put a pin there. We put it straight down. That's not too bad. It should come up at the corner of the back. Yeah, that's not bad. Good enough for this girl. Okay, and then I can take these out. I don't know if I was supposed to do that. I think I have to, because I have to take the pin out as I go anyway. And then you sew right on the line. So Fibercast is all about just spending 60 minutes doing something you love. 
It could be sitting and watching this and drinking a glass of wine. It could be knitting. It could be sewing right there at your sewing machine. I started it originally as a way to add more fun to my life. All I was doing was working Monday through Friday and then chores on the weekend. And the next thing you know, it's Monday again and you're back to the rat race. Okay, so that's not bad. And sure enough, what you find is even, even just one hour a week. It is truly amazing what you can get done. And so we've continued to do it. And I couldn't do it without you. We really, really do love that we are doing it. Because I'll tell you, it in order for Sue to be nearing the completion of a Dear Jane, that's commitment. And I don't care what else is going on in your life. If you're, it's, it's satisfying when you can set your mind to a task or to something and see it through. It doesn't happen overnight, but surely, slowly, steadily, Sue is doing all 200 and what, 50 some odd Dear Jane blocks. It's over 5,000 pieces that are in that quilt. This is the one made by Jane Stickle in 1863. She finished it. Her husband was off in the Civil War. She was up in Vermont and she stitched away. And now we're all making her replicas. Oh, because this is a Y seam, I'm gonna start right at the point of intersection, not at the end, if that makes sense. So see right here, I'm gonna stop there. So I've stopped there and there. Yeah, that one didn't come out so well. But I'm going to live with it. <laughs> okay, now what we need to do is the Y seam. And this, I'm not even going to use that, I guess. And then, okay, so I'm going to peel this back a little bit. Hoo-hoo! Why -hoo. seams are our friends. Well, you guys do Y seams. Think I'm doing this right? So this similarly, I'm only going to go up to the point. And then, ha, how would you guys do it? I know Becca, Becca, you're going to have to show me how to do this when we're at Missouri Star. There we go. I bet you have a much better way. Huh. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, and I even pulled out my porcupine quill. Remember I've been talking about that? So this is my porcupine quill that Lima Witty gave me. And you can use it here to ease your fabric under the needle. You don't want your finger to get in there. Let's see, this will be less than stellar, I'm sure. But then again, maybe it'll be perfect. Not bad. 
Okay, B, I'm so excited about what you made for us. Thank you. I will quilt that puppy. If anyone out there needs long arm quilting, my machine is almost idle. I have a couple that I'm working on this weekend in the queue, and then I need more quilts to quilt. Okay. So, one more, and then how are we doing? Hey, Rita's there. Hi, Rita. Oh, and she says she likes the overhead cam. Oh, and Drew. Hi, Drew. I'm psyched. I need to teach you how to quilt so we can make you all of your, your sports stars and your sports athletes some uniforms or hats or something. <laughs> Drew is my nephew. You may recall in past years, we went out to the University of Virginia to their football games. I'm psyched. I can't wait to tell Uncle Bobby that you were here, Drew. Okay. Now, so again, on this Y seam, I'm sure there are better ways to do this. Let's see. Let's fold this this way. Here we go. Don't worry about the glue. See the glue from the glue stick? That will wash off or wear off. I guess if we were making heirloom quilts, we wouldn't want that. Because it will attract bugs or possibly deteriorate the fabric. So we're making charm quilts for the charm and fun of it. What are you all working on? I, I'll have to go look right now. I wanted to make sure we finish this though. Okay, so we're a little light there. See how that is a little shy. So when I make my seam, I'll just have to remember that it's a, it'll be a thin seam. There. I think that'll be cool. A lot of them, and then there will be red all the way around it. Whew, it's going to be red. Let's make sure I say hi to everyone. Again, send your send email to Lynn at simplycolorful.com. Carol, hi, Carol. She says, love what you did with the binding on the quilt behind you. Cornerstones, awesome. Happy sewing, Carol O. Thank you, Carol. And thank you for your help on, on it. It really, the resizing really made a difference. So thank you. Kathleen, hello. Kathleen says, I'm here tonight. I'm enjoying watching you work. She says, I haven't been sewing for a while, but now it's time to get into a project. Yes, sewing, Kathy, I hope you do. She says, uh, this year is a new beginning for me. Yep. Yep. I've been thinking of you, Kathy. Life goes through different ups and downs, doesn't it? She says, but, but you're going to get through it. Miss, she says, she missed me while I was off. Good for you to have some fun. Thank you. Thank you. She says, I have many projects that need finishing up. Have a wonderful time at the Missouri trip. Hugs from Sewing Kathy. Well, thank you. And I would love to see the first UFO that you tackle. So let us know. Show us what you've been working on or what you, the first one you pull out. I'd love to see it. Carol. Oh, and she's going to show us good fortune. She says, hi, Linen Fiber Casters. I hope you've all had a good holiday period and got to spend time with your loved ones and got to do things you love. Yes, exactly. 
She says, I spent time with my family over Christmas and was able to gift four of them with quilts. Oh, that's amazing. She says, I've been trying to keep up with the Bonnie Hunter mystery good fortune and decorating, although quilting is more fun than painting. Isn't that the truth? She says, the final reveal was today and I have one block sewn and another laid out. She says, glad to see you back. My Friday night has not seen the same without you. Yours, Carol, in Yorkshire, England. You too. And look at that. Isn't that great? Oh, that's going to be fun. Oh, Dawn. Hi, Dawn. She says, I solved the sound problem by muting the Facebook feed so that only the image is playing. Ah, Good call. And I wonder if there was a delay. She says, love the new camera angle, sending smiles, Don. Oh, good. Thank you for letting me know, Don. Uh, I think of you almost every day. Oh, she says, here's another one. Don says, I'm sitting here knitting and enjoying the kickoff to season six, she says. I just brought up Facebook Live. Very cool. Listening to both sound streams from YouTube and Facebook is disorienting since they are not in sync. But I love the two viewing methods. Okay. So it is true. So they're out of sync. So if you can stand it, watch one with the words and one without, if that makes sense. Cool. Dawn, I'm so glad you're out there. Ah, oh, and Urban Elements. Uh-oh, Urban Elements says new block of the months. Look at these quilt designs. You guys see this? I tell you, machine quilting designs are amazing. Those are very fancy. Oh, I should show you a couple of, oh, now that didn't work because I didn't show Facebook. And it's hard to see, so go to urbanelements.com. Um, I do wanna show you a couple, so, I showed you this one that I've been working on. This is the Jean Birchman quilt. There's an up close of it. Let's see what else we have here. So here's that one done. There it is. So when Jean gets home from her her um, cruising, we will deliver that to her. That'll be fun. Oh, my iPad is awfully dirty. My mother would not approve. Anyway, what a fun first episode of season six. Six. I want to thank you all on YouTube for watching. And maybe this will work. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for joining our first Facebook Live. I'll see you next week here on Fibercast at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. Bye, everyone. Do what you love. I bet I don't know how to stop it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.